I gotta keep it real. Because y'all are my homies. And what I do with my homies is I keep it real. It's f***ing freezing out here. <laughs> it's absolutely ball-shrivelingly cold. It's windy. It's snowing. And it's April 3rd. Oh! But we have a job to do. And that job is to talk about Frank Darabont's forgotten classic from 2007, 16 years old, The Mist. For uh, those of my uh, fellow film buffs and geeks who really dig black and white movies, this would be the version to watch, in, in my opinion. I really hope you enjoy the black and white of The Mist. And if you don't know Frank Darabont, you do. You just don't know it. He's the director of such classics as The Shawshank Redemption, The Green Mile, and even episodes of TV, including The Walking Dead. And not only is he a great director, because he is a great director, but he's also a fantastic, possibly even better, of a writer. He has written some incredible films, and the first season of Walking Dead, uh, the films include The Blob, <laughs> The remake of The Blob, which I love. Nightmare on Elm Street, number three. You should listen to your mother. God damn it, Kristen, you ruin everything. Every time I bring a man home, you spoil it. You know what your shrink says? You're just trying to get a little attention. And it's unfortunate that he may not make something again. Because the last feature he did, The Mist, is so strong. I am disappointed, disheartened, and disgruntled that we may never see him again. I will say out of the gate though, it is a low budget film. It had an 18 million some odd budget, which is a lot of money, but not a lot of money for a movie, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> it's all in set in one location, which is just this convenience store, grocery store, in this small town where everybody ends up to fight against this apocalypse that's happening outside. This mist rolls in, and there's a bunch of things in the mist, but you don't know what they are, and neither do the people. So they hide in this grocery store and try and, you know, live until it goes away. Bob, mm -hmm. you have to understand. The ending if is I, not negotiable. Exactly. And if I were willing to change the ending, I'd be making this movie for over twice the budget that that yeah. you're talking about. But it absolutely makes the most of that budget. It mainly takes place in one location with a small crew behind the camera and a handful of main characters. Sure, they have a good amount of extras populating this convenience store, but it's pretty contained for a good portion of the runtime. The main handful of characters find themselves separated early and often from the main body of animals. I mean, people in the store. Sometimes the budget does rear its ugly head with dated visual effects and some unfortunately unintentional comedy from shooting the scenes as run and gun as they do. Where are the goddamn extinguishers? Even though it's only in one location though, I wouldn't say the film's ever boring. It does have its limitations, but it is well paced, and they make a lot of use out of the real estate they have. They shoot pivotal scenes in loading docks, in these tight little aisles of the convenience store, and they even venture outside once or twice to this rundown, rickety, disturbing, and disgusting pharmacy. Oh, God. Oh, I. No! Ah! 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 And a big part of this is how the movie's shot, not just how the movie's edited, or how the movie's paced, or the locations that they get, which are all great, by the way, but the way it's shot is mostly handheld, it's mostly kind of this jerky, snap zooms, panning left and right really quickly, quick editing, and it almost feels like it's a point of view. It's so visually interesting, not just in the set design, but the way the camera is held mostly to handheld work too. Frank Darabont knows precisely when to slow that camera work down into long, pretty stable shots with long cuts. So you have these sequences that can be very quickly paced, very frenetic, very energetic at the right moments when action's at its highest. And then you have drama and the scene slows down. Obviously, you need to slow drama down a little bit, but whenever something dramatic happens, you get much longer shots and much more stable, contained shots. And once things start ramping up, then the pace of the scene can start ramping up too. It's really subtle, but really obvious and really brilliant. It puts you inside the store with these characters acting almost like a first person point of view. Jim, right? Mm -hmm. Myron? You guys are... You, well, you don't seem to understand. 
Well, you're trying real hard not to. This isn't an ordinary mist, okay? You, you open that door and something gets in here. Like what? Well, like whatever made, made that noise I heard. Are you guys being willfully dense? And I think it's incredibly important that the audience is put into the film because without that, I don't think this movie would work as well. And it, it's not just because of all the things I've listed already, but the main character played by Thomas Jane, David Drayton, I think is his name, is the most pivotal part of this movie. If we don't connect with him, then the movie is completely lost. And again, it does a great job of the technical things and trying to make you feel the situation. But Thomas Jane's character, this logical guy who is going through all of these sequences and making the decisions we would make makes us feel like we are him, or at least right there with him, cheering him on. But consistently, Thomas Jane's character makes the decisions that we as the audience can make. And we go, okay, I'm right on board with him. Yeah, okay, go get those medicines for those guys. Yeah, chop that thing up. Yeah, why are they making him go out into the, the mist when we heard a noise with him? That's insane, right? Are you guys being willfully dense? Even more importantly, the film does an absolutely outstanding job of revealing information to the audience in the same way he receives it. That's Joe. Yeah, Joe died of his burns while you were asleep. We have a kind of bird's eye view of characters. We have a bird's eye view of what's going on. We're not in the situation. So if we have information that the main character doesn't in this context of this movie, then we can feel elevated from it. So the way that this movie tackles that is that if there's information Thomas Jane doesn't know, we don't know. And I think that is brilliant, not just because it puts us, again, into the situation, but because we can learn things as the character learns them. So it doesn't feel like exposition. It feels like we're naturally learning things as it goes along. Are you guys being willfully dense? There's a lot that we learn about him and through him about the situation. And to the credit of the film, it manages to have a lot happen in an incredibly well-paced way. The threat is constantly mounting, leveling up the stakes as it goes, culminating in one of the single darkest and most effective conclusions in any movie I have seen. The important aspect is the elevation of the threat, though. At first, we hang out with David as he goes about his business as an artist. Then, we see a mysterious mist rolling through town. But like David, we see it as something not nearly as threatening as we should. Quickly after this, we are trapped in this store with no clue what it, this mist is or what could be inside. Then we see a horrific tentacle monster followed by locusts being eaten by these mini pterodactyl things and so on. After the very first action to try and turn on the generator outside ends with a horrible consequence of a person being brutally murdered, the threats become very real to us and to them. It almost feels like the mist could be hiding anything, a perfect metaphor for the themes at play. Every character seems to have something that they are hiding that is slowly pulled out of them as the gravity of the situation sets in. Something in the mist! Something in the mist! John Lee. And that kind of correlates with real life, you know? We have a mist around ourselves, and we only present things that we want other people to see, and that's kind of what the mist is. It shrouds people until people start to freak out. And that's component number two of the mist, is that the mist represents people's fear and it, people's desire to be safe. And when the mist rolls in, everybody loses their minds because it's the end of the world. So everybody freaks out, they become tribal animals, and they start devouring each other because they're scared. And the mist is a perfect representation of that fear. The only time the mist leaves is when the fear dissipates. And that's component number three, which is the ending. And the ending is brutal, which I won't spoil much of, but it seems to be saying that every action has a consequence, and it's dependent on whether you can live with that consequence or not, and that's what the mist is. When you make a decision, you don't know whether that decision is going to lead to something positive or something negative, and the mist is the cloud surrounding the decision. Something's got the exhaust then plugged up from the outside. You get it running long enough to raise that door a little? I'll go out and clear whatever's blocking it. Generator. Thinking we could use that shotgun of yours. I saw where you parked when I pulled in. Red pickup, right? Far entrance. Son, you got brass balls. Well, we 
or something up. I just need you to hang in a little longer. That's Joe. Yeah, Joe died of his burns while you were asleep. Which is only exacerbated by the near-religious cult brought about by the film's real antagonist, Karen. While Thomas Jane is constantly right, this horrible bitch seems right. And when you're stuck in a store with nothing but fear and speculation, someone who seems right seems right. He'll walk out that door and be torn to shreds. Oh, oh God, he's dead, he's dead! Get out of here! Oh, let's go, let's go! It plays with this microcosm of the world to a near flawless degree. We can see not only ourselves in these characters, but people around us too. We all know the insane doomsday conspiracy theorist who manages to get one thing right every once in a while. We all know an older, miserable man working a dead-end cashier job. And we all know someone in the military who likes keeping secrets from us. It's absolutely perfect at emulating relatable life and turning it upside down to see how these people will react. I think we all wish to be Thomas Jane, taking charge, making decisive, logical decisions, and helping people throw out their panic, but it also seems to ask the audience if that's actually for the best. Thomas Jane seems to do everything right, at least to me. Yet in the film's final moments when the few surviving characters make an absolutely bone-chilling but logical decision, the mist suddenly clears, leaving Thomas Jane utterly alone, stuck with fear and guilt that the mist brought on. But in a moment of helplessness, a rash decision ultimately will define the rest of your life. It's incredibly haunting to think of this as a real-life situation. The mist of fear, of speculation, and of the unknown constantly stands against us, and the only real way to part it is through the decisions we make. <laughs> and I think it does a great job of driving that theme home throughout the movie. There's plenty of times when our main character makes a decisive decision or jumps into action on something, and then you find out later that it was possibly the worst way he could have gone. There's that great scene when they go into the pharmacy to get pain meds or drugs or something to help a guy that was burning to death. And they go into this pharmacy and they find out that it was a worse decision than just letting him die. And that's what this movie's all about, how these consequences are affecting these characters and the actions that they take to try and minimize those consequences. And it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse because the fear of the situation is getting the better of them and creating these religious zealots who are sacrificing people and making horrible, horrible decisions and basically pushing putting everyone back into the dark ages just because they're scared and the mist represents all of that and that's why i love this movie i think it's fantastic i think if you haven't seen it you should watch it